Assalamu alaikum dear students i hope that you guys are doing absolutely wonderful welcome back to the class today is our fourth lecture uh, and we are doing this course of communication and presentation skills together and the topic of today's discussion will be types of communication so today you will be learning about different types of communication this is the outline of uh, the, the the layout of today's lecture first of all we'll talk, talk about two basic types of communication the verbal communication and uh, non verbal communication and then we'll have a quick look at the forms of communication and uh, in the forms of communication uh, we will be looking at uh, interpersonal communication intrapersonal communication small group communication one to one uh, one to group communication and mass communication so let's get started so these are the uh, types of communication uh, as i told you in the in the previous slide that uh, two basic types of communication are there uh, the verbal communication and non verbal communication so in verbal communication we again have two types the oral communication and written communication so these two are the types of verbal communication and in non verbal communication we have uh, kinesics haptics proxemics chronomics sign language and para language right so uh, before moving towards the the the, the type of uh, communication uh, let me tell you this that we also call them the means of communication means means uh, the sources the mediums the channels so communication can be verbal okay with the help of words with the help of written or oral words and it can be non verbal as well with the help of some signs or with the help of some symbols now uh, in verbal communication these are the types of uh, these are the parts of verbal communication verbal communication can be oral and it can be written as well now moving to the verbal communication what is verbal communication verbal uh, communication refers to the form of communication in which message is transmitted verbally verbal communication is done by words mouth or a piece of writing right so objective of every communication is to have people uh, understand understand uh, what we are trying to say so this is what the purpose of communication is now we are speaking uh, and we are not speaking without any purpose we are speaking that the other pers uh, other people they should understand what we are trying to say right so whenever a person speaks they there there always uh, is a reason behind uh, that creation of the speech so why people are speaking they are speaking with one purpose that the other people they can understand them now in order to make other people understand okay while you are speaking or while you are trying to communicate you should be knowing about a lot of things about communication so that is why this course is very important now as i told you that uh, in verbal communication we have uh, two uh, two types the oral communication and the written communication so in oral communication spoken words are used okay and uh, it includes face to face conversations speech telephonic conversations video radio television and voice over internet so these are the uh, these are the types or these are the contexts of oral communication now oral communication is influenced by volume speed and clarity of speaking so these things are very important when it comes to oral communication because when you are writing your spellings are very important the punctuation marks are very important but when you are trying to communicate the message through speaking then in that scenario your volume your speed and uh, the clarity of the words this is very important because if you are speaking and your your speed is not uh, accurate or adequate and if the volume of uh, uh, the words that you are producing is not uh, ad 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 adequate and if uh, the words that you are producing uh, if the words are not clear the other person will not be able to understand you right so in oral communication uh, the volume the speed and clarity of speaking is very important now there are some advantages of oral communication and there are some disadvantages as well and we'll look at uh, both of them now uh, the first advantage of oral communication is that uh, uh, it is very quick quickness in exchange of ideas when you are orally communicating uh, you can quickly convey the uh, the message 
uh, and maybe when you are writing uh, you will send uh, that message or that letter and the other person will receive it then the other person will read it so it may take a lot of time but uh, the oral communication it is quick and uh, in oral communication since the people they are in front of you you can get the quick feedback as well and oral communication is flexible when you are uh, uh, communicating the message uh, you can use uh, your uh, body language you can use the non verbal language and you can very easily uh, communicate the message and then in the oral communication the personal touch is also uh, the personal uh, the, the personal touch is also uh, very important right so because uh, when you are communicating you can use your body language you can use signs and you can you can actually feel the audience in front of you so this is very import, uh, important and in oral communication uh, th there are very less chances of misunderstanding because the people uh, you are speaking to in front of you uh, you can uh, if there is some confusion you can uh, you can fix the confusion then and there so these are the advantages of oral communication and when we talk about the disadvantages of oral communication uh, the first disadvantage is that it is unfit for lengthy messages right if you have to uh, let's say communicate uh, a, a longer message so so for that oral communication is not uh, suitable for that you, maybe you have to write a book or you have to go for the written communication and it is unfit for policy matters as well when you are trying to make a policy so it should be it should always be in written form because if you will say if you if you, if you will orally communicate the other person uh, the other people they will say that uh, they can deny they can say okay, we we did not get anything uh, in written right so it is it is not suitable for the policy matters and uh, uh, the oral communication it lacks of the written proof as well whatever you are speaking whatever you are listening you do not have any written proof for that okay and oral communication is expensive as well like for example if you have to convey a message to uh, 1000 people so it would be you will take uh, you will require a, uh, a big hall you will require uh, some of the uh, some of the gadgets and some of the electronic uh, uh, supplies as well to co to communicate uh, your message and that would be expensive and uh, the oral communication uh, in oral communication there is lack of clarity as well right so maybe uh, when you will be speaking uh, uh, and since there will be no uh, spellings okay you will be simply uttering some voices so maybe your message will not be that much clear or the people they will misunderstand you so you, you must have experienced this that sometimes the teacher is in the class and uh, he or she is uh, trying to tell you something and you do not understand and when that that message is written on the whiteboard you automatically and immediately you understand the message right so in spoken uh, communication in the oral communication there is a lack of clarity as well and in oral communication there can be some misuse of time as well okay sometimes pe people uh, take a lot of time in explaining simple things and that can consume the time of the audience so there is misuse of time as well in the oral communication and uh, uh, for oral communication presence of both parties is necessary and this is something uh, which is uh, uh, which is the biggest uh, you can say that drawback of the uh, of the oral communication because in written communication you can send the message and the other person can uh, uh, other person can receive the message and read the message at his or her own convenience but in oral communication it is necessary that both of the parties uh, both of the the people who are communicating they should be present uh, face to face and then and only then the the oral communication can happen now we move to the written communication uh, in written communication written signs or symbols are used to communicate and uh, in written communication message can be uh, transmitted via uh, email letter report memo etc right and in written uh, you know in written communication uh, it is influenced by the vocabulary and grammar which is used all right and uh, then uh, writing style precision and clarity of the language used they are also very important so in oral communication you may not have to take care of the spellings you may not have to take care of take care of the punctuation marks and the grammar but uh, when you are writing you have to be very careful about the vocabulary about the spellings about the sentence structure about the grammar about the writing style and the precision and the language that you are using should also be 
clear because sometimes the written language it can create ambiguity for the uh, for the reader and since uh, writing uh, you know written communication is not one to one communication so there can be some problems with the reader and if uh, the reader is reading something and uh, the writer is not present at that time so this means that the reader is in trouble so uh, there is there is a huge responsibility on the writer if you are using the written communication now uh, let's have a look at the advantages and the disadvantages of written communication uh, written uh, communication is suitable for uh, lengthy messages if you have to uh, write uh, uh, if you have to convey something which is uh, which is having some complex information you can simply write a book and that book can be of 1000 pages 2000 pages so it is very suitable uh, this method of communication is very suitable for uh, this uh, the lengthy messages and the uh, the second advantage of written communication is that it leaves a written proof and uh, the message is clear and it is a less expensive method and uh, the presence of both parties is not necessary and it is true and effective method but there are some disadvantages as well and the, the, the biggest disadvantage of written communication is that it is unfit for uneducated persons now the spoken language can be understood by the illiterate by the uneducated people as well but the written communication can only be understood by the people who can uh, who can read who know how to read so this uh, uh, this uh, this method of communication is not suitable for the uneducated persons and uh, in written communication there is lack of secrecy there is lack of privacy as well like when you are communicating face to face you know that the person in front of you is uh, uh, the person you are talking to and there is nobody else listening to you but when you are writing something you know this is the as we say that this is the age of screenshots right so when you write something uh, it 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 can go public and it can be used as a proof as well so uh, this is the second disadvantage or the second drawback of the written communication and the third drawback of written communication is that uh, there is no quick feed feedback available right so uh, you will send the message the other person will read it and then he will understand and whenever he or she will get the time he or she will respond and you will have to keep waiting uh, till then so these are the disadvantages of the written communication now we move to the non verbal communication non verbal communication is basically uh, communication through signs and symbols and it can go without verbal communication without using the words without using the language you can communicate and that communication is called the non verbal communication and uh, uh, you know verbal uh, communication like non verbal communication it can go without the verbal communication but verbal communication cannot go without non verbal communication so from this we can understand the importance of non verbal communication as well as you can see a cute ch uh, cute uh, child and uh, the cute child is making uh, certain faces and from every uh, face uh, every facial expression and the use of hands uh, we can get a message like here uh, he is amazed or he is uh, wondering here the the baby is thinking here the baby is happy here the baby is naughty here the baby is shy or blushing here the baby is laughing here the baby is angry here the baby is again thinking here again in a ha very happy mood the baby is smiling the baby is uh, giving thumbs up here the baby is again naughty so you know uh, the uh, although the baby is not saying anything the baby is not producing any language or any sound or the baby is not writing but even then we can understand what the baby is doing or what the baby wants to say so this is basically this is an example this is a perfect example of non verbal communication now uh, if i talk about the importance of non verbal communication so whenever we are uh, communicating the message so it is 10% of the message that is being conveyed by the voice uh, by the words 40% of the message is being conveyed by the tone of the voice and 50% of the message is being conveyed by the body language yes you know there can be so many ways of saying the same words using different tone of voice and using different body language uh, when we say okay now the tone of the voice uh, and if i say this uh, with my angry face so this means that words are only carrying the 10% of the message and when i say that okay okay now the words are the same but the tone of the voice and the body language is different and the huge message is being conveyed by the tone of the voice and the body language so from this you can understand the importance of the non verbal communication 
Now let's have a look at the types of non-verbal communication. Non-verbal non communication can, uh, can be through the body language and it is called kinesics. It can be through the touch that is called haptics, uh, through the space distancing that is called pro proxemics and uh, uh, chronomics. Okay? Uh, chronomics is basically uh, you know, the amount. Uh, the, the the involvement of the of the time uh, in the in the communication process and it can be through the sign language and the para language as well now we will be looking at these six types one by one in detail now first of all let's talk about the body language so what is body language body language is basically uh, face facial expressions your uh, different uh, expressions of the face that also are part of uh, your body language and then eye contact right eye contact uh, or the gaze that is that also comes in the body language gestures gestures means different signs postures of the body while you're standing while you're sitting while you're talking to somebody the postures uh, they also are part of the body language and the personal appearance you know your hairstyle your uh, your dress okay your style of the beard okay and if you are if, if you're a girl uh, your scarf and uh, you know your each and everything uh, your personal appearance it also conveys a lot of messages and it also is part of the body language now facial expressions now face is the index of mind you know it's a very beautiful line face is the index of mind okay the face basically uh, tells whatever is going on in the mind think how much information can be conveyed with a smile or a frown by facial expressions we can sh we can show or we can understand happiness, sadness, anger and fear and much more can be understand with the help of the facial expressions. Here you can just look at the face of the, 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 the people and just by looking at the face of the people we can, we can, we can truly understand, we can completely understand uh, what the other person is feeling, what is going on in his mind, whether the, the person is happy or sad or angry or fearful or annoyed or exhausted or uh, convinced or confused. So there can be so many things that we can only we can understand only by looking at the face of the other person. So facial expressions are very important. And so are the eye gaze. Looking at another person can indicate a range of emotions like an anger, grudge and danger uh, and a dangerous look can tell you that someone is unhappy and it is uh, the other person is not comfortable with. Eyes are also very important Okay, uh, through the movement of eyes. Eyes can convey the happiness, eyes can convey anger, eyes can convey denial, eyes can convey acceptance. So there are so many messages that we can without speaking, without uttering a single word, we can convey a lot of messages only by the eye gaze. Yes, that's right. And gestures are also very important. You know, you can see here uh, in the in the in the upper uh, picture, there are four individuals and they are using uh, different gestures. And these gestures are basically conveying different meanings. Postures are also very important uh, in the in the last uh, four pictures. It is the same uh, girl, but uh, her uh, her different uh, movement or you can say the different position of the hand is conveying different meaning. Okay, uh, when she is uh, putting her hand uh, be below the chin, so this means that she is happy or she is convinced. Here uh, the picture is conveying a different meaning, here the picture is conveying a different meaning and here it is conveying a different meaning. So this means that gestures and uh, the body postures, the body positions, they can also convey a lot of meanings. Then the personal appearance and uh, adornment also, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it is also very adornment, it also conveys a lot of meanings. So appearance can indicate uh, the profession and it can show the interest, the nature and the taste as well and it can also point out our religious and cultural values. Now here uh, by looking at, uh, by just looking at this person we can say that the, uh, this individual is a Muslim individual. Uh, how? By looking at the personal appearance. So here in this example we can easily say that these two are the doctors and these two are the engineers and this is also an engineer this may be a lawyer she is also a doctor and she, she may be uh, a business uh, administrator so by looking at the, fa the 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 appearance by looking at the dress code uh, we can easily uh, understand the personalities of the individuals haptics the touch the touch language john keats uh, a very famous romantic poet he once said that touch has a memory 
right so we know uh, the good touch and the bad touch and uh, when when uh, you know sometimes the touch uh, is uh, uh, very positive and sometimes we feel offended by the touch as well so touch is also a language haptics we call it the the the, the study of the touch language is uh, is called the uh, is known as haptics so uh, touch is also uh, you know touching other people like for example uh, when we touch our uh, our uh, family members when we touch our parents our uh, brothers sisters daughters so it actually gives us positive energy okay we feel good uh, after uh, uh, after uh, you can say that after touching uh, you know uh, the, the the relatives or the or the beloved ones so this also conveys a message and sometimes we we don't like to be touched sometimes we feel uncomfortable when the stranger or somebody we are not close with uh, tries to uh, you know touch with our body so from this we can understand this that the way words uh, sometimes we accept some words and uh, some words we do not accept some words we like and some words we don't like same is the case with the touch so this means that touch is also a language and it is part of the non verbal communication then proxemics the space language that is also very important uh, you you must have experienced this that uh, if somebody who is stranger if somebody comes too close to you so we feel uncomfortable we try to uh, basically maintain a, a distance now this uh, this is this is uh, uh, you can say that this is a diagram that i would like to explain to you now this is uh, you you can say that this is the individual and uh, the people you are intimate with okay the people you are very close to you will try to keep them close to you like for example uh, if 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 we if we are uh, if we are meeting with our father or mother we like to hug them we like to get very close to them but we do not do this uh, with the strangers or we do not do this with colleagues or the people uh, we have a formal relationship or we have to maintain a formal distance right so communicate uh, to uh, pro proxemics is basically to communicate while keeping a distance all right so the amount of distance we need and the amount of space we perceive uh, you know as belonging to us is influenced by a number of factors including uh, social norms and uh, the situational factors the personality characteristics and the level of uh, familiarity if we are uh, familiar to somebody uh, you know we, we we would like to that uh, to uh, we would we, we can allow that person to come closer to us but if we are not familiar with that person we would uh, prefer to maintain a distance with that person right so proxemics is also a very important aspect of the non verbal communication then we move to the signs signs are also very important we already have talked about this uh this here you can see that the traffic signs and uh, these are the some hand movements these are also signs like these things are not allowed these are prohibited and here we again have some signs these are the signs for uh, you know the 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 restrooms or the washrooms uh, for disabled people here you can uh, wash your hands here you can this is for drinking water okay this is this water is for uh, washing hands and this water is for drinking here the person is saying that uh, keep quiet or be quiet so this means that with signs we can convey a lot of meanings then uh, chron uh, uh, chronemics chronemics is basically the time language now for example if somebody calls you at 2 am in the morning it indicates some kind of emergency like the if the other person is calling you at 2 am so there there can be some emergency that the the, the other person is calling you uh, that late in the night so uh, for example you reached uh, in a party on time it shows that you are you are punctual so time is also a language and time also conveys a lot of information about the personality of the other person or the situation of the communication and then we move to the para language now para language is basically uh, the attributes of speaking okay para language are the attributes of speaking uh, which include the pitch the tone uh, the volume the tempo the rhythm the articulation articulation mean the production resonance nasality nasality like uh, the use of the nasal cavity uh, you know these uh, the sounds that are produced from the uh, from the nasal cavity from the nose and even the accent of the speaker they are collectively known as the para language for example when you are uh, speaking a language a word so uh, you you would be using a certain amount of uh, cert certain amount of volume and tempo and rhythm and articulation and resonance 
nasality tone so all of these aspects they are basically part of the para language and we can understand mood and the situation by the para language expressions as i already gave you the example of okay so uh, the word is same but you can say okay 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 so you know these three different uh, 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 you know same word produced in three different ways it is conveying different three different moods and three different situations so these moods and these situations are basically expressed with the help of the para language then we uh, move to the forms of communication there are five uh, basic forms of communication the interpersonal communication the intrapersonal communication uh, small group communication uh, one to uh, one man communicating with a group and it can be mass communication as well now uh, one to one to group communication it involves a speaker who speaks to, to who seeks to inform or motivate an audience one man speaking to a group so that is basically here you can see that one man conveying a message to a group of people so example is a teacher and a class of students so that kind of communication is basically one to group communication then small group communication small group communication is a communication within formal or informal groups or teams uh, it is a group interaction that results in decision making problem solving and discussion within an organization so what would be the example example would be a group planning a surprise birthday party for someone or uh, it can be a team uh, working together on a project so that kind of communications are called small group communications then we have the intrapersonal communication intrapersonal communication is communication that occurs in your own mind it is the basis of your feelings and beliefs something going on within the mind of a person is called intrapersonal communication so what are the examples examples are when you make any kind of decision like what to eat what to wear whether to go, to go and attend a party or not when you think about something what you want to do on the weekend or when you think about another person so that is basically basically called the intrapersonal communication in simple words you can say that the self talk is basically the intrapersonal communication then we have the interpersonal communication uh, communication between two or more people is called the interpersonal communication so examples are when you are talking to your friends a teacher and student discussing an assignment so all of these examples are basically the examples of interpersonal communication then we have the mass communication mass communication is basically communication through electronic gadgets uh like mass media like books journals tv uh, newspaper etc so that kind of communication is called mass communication so this was our discussion about the types of communication and uh, in next lecture we will be talking about uh, some other interesting topics if you have not watched the previous uh, videos in the in the description of this video you will find the link of the previous lectures that you can explore and the upcoming lectures will also be uh, added in that uh, one link so go and watch uh, the previous videos if you have not watched and if there is any question in your mind or if there is anything that you want to add uh, do comment in the comments box uh, comment box and if there is any question you can note it down on the on the, on your notebook and then you can discuss uh, that question with me in the class as well take care of yourself see you in the next class Allah Hafiz